Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I want to go and show you guys how does the visual frame buffer for V-Ray works and why it's a good idea to every time if you're going to be using V-Ray to use the V-Ray built-in frame buffer. So let's start from the beginning. First thing, let's go and press F10 or render setup over here. And uh, in the common, let's make sure that first we have V-Ray set up as our renderer. So if it's a production advanced, then it's V-Ray, which can also be seen uh, by the tabs here. It says V-Ray, Indirect Illumination, Settings, Render Elements. Now, uh, first thing is that all, the, all of these options are to set up V-Ray. But like I said, in this video, I just want to go around and explain just the frame buffer. And in the coming videos, I want to take some time and explain uh, how the anti-aliasing, the color mapping and the GI works uh, in greater detail. But for now, let's just uh, stick to the frame buffer. So clicking here opens up this roll down menu. Now there is only one uh, option that we can click here and that is the enable built in frame buffer. Now uh, by default this thing is off. So what happens and uh, uh, why would we want to enable this? Well let's see it like this. In this scene like here I basically have one teapot. If I press F9 or render, as I click render, as you can see, all of those little squares uh, pass through the entire scene pretty fast because it's a very simple scene. But if we had a more complicated scene, it would track where the mouse is positioned and it would render that area first. Now, the next one is a, ren a region renderer. So if we click this one, we can basically choose which part of the image we want to be rendered while the rest of the image is not changed. This can be used uh, when we're in the process of fixing up the, the image or we've made some changes to a certain part of the image, but the rest of the image is not changed. So we just simply run, uh, select that region, we click render, and only that region gets rendered. Just turn them off. And now we get to three more buttons over here. But before I uh, explain these I want to go down here and explain one of these buttons first and that's the little H button over here we click this off and turn it over here now we have quite a few buttons on the bottom as well so what I want to do is click this first H button or the button where it says show VFB history window by clicking this, we're going to basically get something like this on the side. Now, what does the render history do? Well, the first time we click enable VFB history, it's going to give you a path. You just have to click it here and basically just tell it where you want it to save all the uh, temporary files. Now, for example, uh, if I go ahead on the side, we have some extra buttons where it says save, load, remove, clear, set A and set B. If I go ahead, click save like this. And now in the background, I'm going to drop in two more teapots like this. And now I'm going to re-render this entire render. There you go. Now we can see we got two more teapots in the background. I can save this render as well. Now we have two renders which are saved in the history. 
Now, what would be the point and why would we want to use this? Well, it's quite simple. These two options on the bottom. Oh, let's see it like this. These two options in the bottom, set A and set B. If we click on the one and set it as A, and click on the second and set it as B. We have a clear divider on the middle of the image. Now we can click this divider and basically scroll through both of the options like this. Now, in this case, it's not very useful, but if we had uh, made some minor changes to a material or lighting of a certain part of a scene, it can be very helpful to see how the difference is going to be between those two. Now, I'm going to go back here. Like I said, we have those three buttons here. And the first one, it says swap A and B. So here we set up uh, option for A and option for B. If we click swap, it's basically going to take the image on the left and put it on the right. So now when I'm going like this, it's different. Well, this one is uh, can allow us to have a horizontal or a vertical you know, click, hold, and then choose the vertical scene. Now it goes like this. So as we can see, this can be quite helpful if we have there we go, dif uh, differences between two shots or three or four renderers, we can make sure that the first one is set as a A while the second one is set up as B and we can see the differences quite easily. All right, that was about the render history. Now, we have a few more options here, but first I wanna click here. That's the show corrections control. When we click this, we get a little window that's basically going to try and do all the things that you would want to do in Photoshop to get some image corrections going. Now, what does it mean? It means that up here, there's, you, you have one little slider that says plus 0, 0 0.00. When you hover above it, you get a little explanation saying that this is the exposure control. So if I cl click it upwards, it doesn't change anything. If I click it back, it doesn't change anything. The reason for this is that all of these controls, we can uh, slide them around like the exposure control here, or we can go over uh, this slider here and control the, uh, the lights. We can control the curve correction here. There you go. There we go, the curve correction, but nothing changes. The reason for this is that the options haven't been, uh, well, turned on in the visual frame buffer. In order to those options to be visible, we basically go for the exposure control. We need to turn on the exposure control where Now this is the colors. We have colors curve, exposure, exposure correction. We click this. And right away, we can see that by sliding this, we can more or less control how the exposure is done. So instead of having to swap between uh, Photoshop or whatever uh, image um, software you're using, you can just do it straight from the visual frame buffer. The second one, like we said, or just let me turn them on, the curve correction the color correction as we can see it darkens the entire image or it brightens it up there you go and the levels there we go so basically with all of the corrections we can do here if we want to see how they're gonna uh, 
change our image or our render, we have to turn them on over here. There we go, click it off. And yeah, like I, the first thing I did was turn on the display colors in sRGB space. If we turned it off, it's gonna be quite uh, darker because it's taking into account the uh, the, the gamma of the renderer without going through a V-Ray camera. So with that, there's the only thing that's left is to uh, explain a little bit about the show stem controls. When you click this, it gives you an option over here that allows you to put different stamps on the renderers you do. For example, if I click a render now, it, it's not showing up anything else. But if I click apply stamp, it's going to basically give me an extra level of details about a render. For example, it's going to tell me how many, uh, how much the render time is, how many primitives there are in, the frame, the option, and pretty much anything I want to have in the scene. For example, if I want, I only want to have the render time shown up, I can go ahead, delete the previous part, then I can click and align it to either the bottom or the top, or I can align it to the left, the right, or the center. So if I put it in the center, I re-render, it's telling me that it takes one second to render this entire frame. So from what you can see, using the uh, visual frame buffer for V-Ray has a lot of uses and a lot of advantages over the standard or the, the scanline renderer which comes with uh, 3ds max i would always recommend using the v-ray frame buffer whenever you are using v-ray and the one last thing i want to show you guys is while we are st still here in the frame buffer settings or over here there is a little button you can tick here it says get resolutions from max if this has been ticked on like it's uh ticked on in my example the resolution for the rendering comes directly from the common tab so from the output size you have this 640 by 480 now if that has been ticked on that resolution stays the same but if we Take it off over here. We can define a different uh, render size right here. So we can go 644, 80, or we can choose one of the other uh, resolutions. For me personally, I always uh, take this on and control my resolution directly from here basically because the output size has quite a few um, render presets that i find helpful like the hdtv video uh, which has basically all the default uh, renders uh, re uh, render sizes like the 1080p 720p but it's it doesn't really uh, matter because we can uh, just do the same thing over here. So whatever your preference is, you can either turn this on or turn this off. So for the frame buffer, I guess that would be all there is to say. And in the next videos, I want to go more about how the actual options work for the anti-aliasing, the color mapping, and the GI or the in indirect illumination. So, thank you for listening and see you next time.